Hi, Perseus Learners, your host Marcus is here. I wanted to post the video earlier, but sadly I got sick and I could only post this today. I see very frequently students try to use unusual words in their answers, thinking that they can get better scores. Instead of that, watch this video until the end and improve your vocabulary range for the subject test or even IELTS test. We're going to cover a couple more common idioms on top of what we've shared in the last video. If you don't have much time, we recommend starting with the idioms in our channel. They're more likely to fit the situations or context that you encounter in the exam. By the way, I see that people ask from time to time about how they can join our online subhub training. It's very easy to register. Just go to our website, www.pressoenglish.com slash training and pick the course that suits you the most. The prices are also listed on that same page too. If you need our help, we're just an email away. Our email address is study at prestoenglish.com. Oh, and don't forget, if you need help with subhub reading or listening, we also have the subhub reading ebook as well as the online listening practice. Now, why don't we just start with our first idiom, out of this world. This can be handy when you're describing something great, an experience that is impressive. Of course, you know the word amazing. This can be a good replacement for that. Check out these examples. Their pizza is out of this world. You have to try it. That would be something you can say when you're trying to recommend a dish to somebody else. Another one. The new electric car I bought is out of this world. That was an out of this world performance. I'm so glad I went to see it. See? This is an easy way to improve your vocabulary range when you're describing something extremely good or impressive. Number two, here's another idiom using the word world. You may be able to use this when talking about the benefits of a certain option you choose. The idiom itself means to have all the advantages of two different situations and none of the disadvantages. Or in other words, you get to enjoy the benefits of two different opportunities. Let's have a look at some examples. Vancouver gives you the best of both worlds. It has English Bay and it's also close to Whistler. So in this sentence, I'm trying to tell the other person that if you choose to live in Vancouver, you get the benefits of both scenarios. One is, yeah, you get to live close to the ocean or close to the beach, and you also get the benefits of being close to the mountain. Here are two other examples. Working remotely provides the best of both worlds. I can spend more time with my family and I can still make a living. The next one, with an apartment in Mississauga, you get the best of both worlds. You're less than 45 minutes away from Toronto, yet you're paying less for a bigger space. Number three, from the definition, this should be obvious when we can use this. On second thoughts, in a conversation, we can tell someone that we've changed our mind by saying that. Would we use this in SOPIP? Well, possibly. For example, in task 5, you can say that you initially thought that the first choice was great. But on second thoughts, you prefer the second choice. Let's look at our sample sentences. At first, I also thought the apartment was great. But on second thoughts, the house is better. Her plan sounds good. But on second thoughts, yours is better. On second thoughts, you shouldn't do that. Try to talk to him first. If you like what you've seen so far, please like our videos and subscribe to Presto English because we have many more useful videos like this in our channel. Idiom number four. This is especially common in situations when people are giving advice to others. If I say keep in mind, or bear in mind, I want you to be aware or remember what I'm about to say, especially for the future. I've got three examples for you here. Number one, it's important to keep in mind the effect of smartphones on children. Two, bear in mind that you have to strictly follow the plan if you don't want to fail. Three, there's one downside that you need to keep in mind. Next, to get straight to the point. The idiom to get straight to the point means you'll address the main subject directly without deviating from the topic. That may be a phrase to use when talking about a difficult situation in subhip task 6. You're trying to explain to the person what's going on. 
Oh, there's another idiom that has the opposite meaning of to get straight to the point, and that is to beat around the bush. So when you beat around the bush, you're avoiding getting to the point. So now let's have a look at our examples. Don't beat around the bush. Just get straight to the point. I don't want to waste your time, so I'll get straight to the point. Let me get straight to the point. Okay, we've covered the first five idioms, or I guess six if you count that last one to beat around the bush. Take a minute or two to review these idioms. I want you to think of some situations where you may be able to use them. Then share your examples in the comment. Make sure you watch this video until the end because I will share the perfect idioms for the test. Remember, knowing the meaning of an idiom is one thing, but to improve your score, you have to use the idioms correctly. Write your examples here. This is your chance to know if your sentence is right or wrong because I'm gonna take a look at them. If you can't do it now, you get another opportunity to have your sentences checked when you join our seven-day online sub-up training. We start our training every Monday, and it's best if you join the session at least two weeks before your test. You want to give yourself enough time to review the materials that you learn. Trust me when I say this: you will discover your weaknesses and know what to do to get your desired scores. We also have our exclusive sub-up online listening practice and reading ebook. So check them out. Students have been able to bump up their scores with our practice materials. If you want to know more about all these materials that I just mentioned, go to our website. It's www.pressenglish.com. You can also read reviews from our past students on our Facebook page. So let's continue with our sixth idiom: to have mixed feelings about something. Expressing your opinions is a common task to do in Sopit. So here's another relevant idiom. When you feel both pleased and unhappy about something at the same time, you have mixed feeling. When I think of this idiom, I think of speaking task seven. You get a question asking you to share your opinion on a certain topic. There, listen to these examples. I have mixed feelings about banning cell phones in school. He is likely to have mixed feelings when he hears about your decision. Many of us have mixed feelings about the company's plan to relocate. Number seven, judging by. This is used when making a guess based on what you observe. Let's say you're describing a picture you see. You're not entirely sure what something is, but you have a guess, or you want to make an assumption. All right. Even though we're talking about subject mostly,、uh, you can definitely use this in IELTS speaking too. After the phrase "judging by," you are introducing the reason why you believe or think something. I think it's easier to understand when we look at some examples. Judging by his reaction, he doesn't seem happy with the present he got. So maybe at the time you looked at, he wasn't smiling, or he has that disappointed look on his face. Judging by the color, the shirt is probably for his daughter. Or judging by the number of people, it seems to be a huge party. Okay, let's continue with idiom number eight: to put yourself in somebody's shoes. The definition of this idiom is to imagine oneself in another person's circumstances or situation. It is possible to use it when you want someone to understand your position. Where do you think you can use this? How about task six, dealing with a difficult situation? As we want the person to understand our decision or action, this may be a good place to use it, even though there may be other tasks where you can use this. Now it's time for some examples. Wouldn't you do the same? Put yourself in my shoes. You need to put yourself in their shoes to understand their response. I'm sure you'll understand if you put yourself in my shoes. Number nine, in no time. To describe something that'll happen very quickly or very soon, we can say in no time. Think about making this comment when you're giving advice to someone. If you do what I just told you, you'll be able to get promoted in no time. And here are two more examples. I'll be back in no time. Don't worry. You'll be back on your feet in no time. This sentence actually means you will recover very soon. So it's good to say to somebody who's ill. And the last one, number ten, to get on my nerves. This describes the feeling of being annoyed. It means to get annoyed and angry. It's a relevant idiom when you're describing an experience when you got upset or when you're giving advice to somebody who's in a quarrel. 
essentially any topic that involves the feeling of being annoyed or irritated. To understand the idiom better, read the following sentences. Since you moved in with her, you've always been getting on each other's nerves. It really gets on my nerves when you make that noise. My roommate keeps getting on my nerves. In addition to the other idioms that we've covered in our video, you will have learned at least 20 idioms in total. This 20 idioms should be an excellent starting point for you in terms of improving your vocabulary range. If you've taken the test multiple times and still cannot get the results you need, please contact us. We are here to help you achieve your goal. I know some of you are concerned about the cost, but you will see on our website how affordable our training is. There's no need to waste thousands of dollars on courses or classes because our training programs are equally effective, if not better. Our students have been able to improve their scores in no time. If you have questions, you can write them in the comments or contact us by email. And before you watch another video, make sure that you subscribe to our channel for the latest self materials and hit like if you learned something new today.